thank you. Uh, thank you for that intro. Can everyone hear me? Perfect. Uh, and thank you. Uh, welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining us today uh, to this webinar. Uh, my name is Rickard, and I will be the host of the webinar organized by Domain Caller. Domain Caller provides domain registries and domain registrars with the most accurate internet data, allowing them to conduct um, a thorough domain monitor and investigations of domain names. But today, uh, we're going to talk about developing domain monitoring strategies, what people are doing, what the registries are doing. Uh, so this will be for registries and registrars. And uh, with me, I have our industry experts and that have been doing this for far longer than I have. And I'm really glad to have all three of you with me. We have uh, Dani Ert, who has spent the last three decades uh, within the IT sector. Um, and the last 15 years as the CEO of the Swedish registry. Um, really happy to have him with us. And Dan is also a senior advisor of the domain quarter. And we also have Peter van der Rost. He is the general manager for Center, the European Country Code Top Level Domain Name Association. Peter oversees Center's activities and liaises with governments, institutions, and or other organizations. Um, in the internet ecosystem. And we also have Philip Dubois. And Philip is the general manager for DNS Belgium and have been there for 12 years. And before that, uh, Philip's uh, uh, thread within his career, if I say it like that, have been telecommunication. And he has worked in the past at Proximus, Telenet, uh, Versatel, and France Telecom, all of the largest uh, telecom operators in Belgium. And me, uh, and myself, I'm the founder and CCO of Internet Vikings, which is one of the largest hosting providers and domain name registrars in the iGaming industry. And I will be representing the registrar's perspective on the issues we're going to discuss as the rest of the team will be talking about the, on the more on the registry side. But really, again, very happy to have the three of you here and also to have the, the audience here. And looking at the audience, um, what about you? Uh, where, where are you guys from? Which industry do you represent? Please share uh, a little bit about you in the chat and let us know, uh, let you know a bit, little bit better. Yeah, we have IT security. We have someone from Dianic. Uh, welcome. Always happy to have more registries. Amiro, nice. And uh, we have the, the Infinite AT. Um, we have people from Digital Marketing. Everyone knows Miro. Oscar from Red Points. We also have Bernard from Real uh, Time Register in the Netherlands. We have Nick from Nomad. There's a lot of people here from within the uh, within the registry side. I see. We also have a few um, a few uh, uh, registrars from like a lot of different countries. From ports from Sweden. We have. People from the Netherlands, from Austria, Kira from Ottawa. Not too early, I hope, in, in Ottawa. Yeah. Thank you all. And I'm really happy to, uh, to hear uh, and to see that we have so many people that we know within the industry. I hope we won't say anything. Uh, well, maybe we'll say something you don't agree on, and then we can have an even better discussion about it. Again, thank you. And for this uh, webinar, uh, again, it's a pleasure to have all of you here. We will uh, start in a second, uh, but we have divided these, uh, this webinar in uh, three parts. So just a little bit of housekeeping so everyone know what to expect. First, we will have a brief discussion, uh, a little brief in introduction from Peter regarding the current state of the industry and his uh, uh, thought on it. 
thoughts on it. Uh, we all, then we'll have a, a discussion uh, where we in together between the four of us, and I will be moder moderating that to see on this topic. And lastly, we will have a Q&A time. So if anyone have any questions, please write that in the chat and we will bring that up as we go along and in the Q&A section. And I hope we uh, try to answer as many things um, and many things and many questions as possible. So now over to you, Peter. Uh, really looking forward to uh, to hear your um, current state of the industry and what you have. Thanks, uh, Richard. Um, I've shared my screen. I hope you're all seeing that. Um, quite well. Lost the video connection. For some reason, I just see Danny. So yeah, no, it works well. All right. Um, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Peter van Rostem, the uh, the general manager of Centre. Um, and I've been asked to provide this audience with a, a short overview of um, trends that we've been observing at Centre. So Centre is the organisation that um, offers a platform for European CCTLDs. Uh, our members are mainly European CCTLDs and we have about a dozen from outside Europe. And we have also some GTLDs that are uh, associate members to, to Centrum. Um, in the, the last decades, we, uh, we had um, many discussions on, on this particular topic. What is the role of a, a registry when it comes to abuse? How do you define abuse? Um, Recently, we've seen um, some of the definitions crystallize on, on technical abuse, uh, spam, malware, um, phishing. Um, but how do we deal with that as, 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 um, as country code top level domain uh, managers? Um, looking at this audience, and I, I saw some quite familiar names and faces there. Um, so obviously, feel free to add in the chat if uh, if you uh, if you think uh, I'm, I'm missing part of the story here. Um, but it does not need an explanation to this group that this is this is a complicated uh, story. Um, when we're we were talking to regulators in the last 10 to 15 years, really, um, and explaining them how what the role is of a CCTLD on a technical level, what a registry does, uh, it is it is quite often an eye opener. Um, and up until recently, it was pretty clear that the domain name system was not the ideal gateway to help and solve all, uh, tr all things that uh, people were annoyed, offended uh, with on the internet or that were plainly illegal. Um, so it's a complicated story that we've been telling over the years. What is the difference between when we started having these discussions and now is that, well, 10 years ago, it was pretty clear none of the registries would come near uh, any discussion on, on content. Uh, people focused mainly on their role as, as uh, technical operators, uh, part of that uh, most basic infrastructure layer. Um, they rightfully also understood that they had no authority to decide on what's illegal. Um, and on, on that, it, also that part of the, of the story is extremely complex. There is the, the jurisdictional aspects um, that uh, are, are pretty hard to fit in a uh, global um, technology uh, and, and matching that with, with, uh, with local rules. Um, CCTLDs have a limited impact on, on, on the availability of content. It is, as we all know, not because you're ripping out a page from the phone book that the drugs dealer will, will, will stop selling his, his drugs. Um, and so as a result, 10 years ago, uh, any intervention uh, is an interim measure, uh, was regarded as an interim measure for emergency situations only. Um, so what has changed? There is a more proactive approach uh, these days. The principles still stand, though. We are still technical. Uh, we still have a technical function. Um, we still don't have an authority to decide on what's legal and what is illegal. And we still have that limited impact on the availability. Um, how does that proactive approach shows these days? Um, first of all, there is a CCTLDs have taken up 
a much larger responsibility in educating uh, their local internet community and not just the uh, registrants and internet users, um, but a community-wide education that includes uh, close collaboration with law enforcement from, from training onwards to, to, to building processes and, and formats and templates. Um, CCTLDs are now using uh, new tools to um, improve a registration data quality. Um, the introduction of uh, AI that's based uh, EID um, systems in, in many different member states uh, have, have obviously opened that door uh, wider than ever before. It's still not rolled out across the whole of Europe, let that be clear, but we, 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 we see um, the um, in increase in availability of tools there. And then within limits, obviously, of what GDPR prescribes, um, share registration data with, with third parties. And then um, finally, also procedures to respond to reports, so notice and action. And maybe Philip uh, will might share some, some on, on that, or maybe I will later on uh, add some details in the, in the discussion, uh, as the NS Belgium there has one of the best examples. So, um, just some examples, and um, I'm, we, we've just written a paper actually at Center um, that will be publicly available, and, and I'll, uh, I'll share um, a copy with the organizers to, to, to share with, uh, with the participants. Um, so I'm, I'm just going to pick one example from each of those proactive measures. Um, when it comes to education, uh, Nick IT, uh, Nick AT um, for Austria. Uh, is providing advice to end users uh, on how to report illegal activities. Um, our Norwegian members from Norit have a, a well-established educational track with law enforcement with a very clear website in both Norwegian and English um, that informs law enforcement authorities on how to deal um, with domain names, how to seize domain names, and what are uh, mechanisms they, 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 there are available and what procedures to follow. Um, on in, uh, improving data quality, uh, DK Hostmaster is, is, uh, has, has, has been setting a nice example there. Um, there's also examples from, uh, from uh, the Estonian registry or from Eurit, um, to with which uh, quite a few of, of the registrars will, will be familiar. Um, there is that thing with the splintered landscape on how everybody is dealing with those accuracy requirements and maybe some more that we will see coming up in the Network and Information Security Directive. Um, but we're working on that. Um, and at the end of, uh, of our conversation, I'll, I'll just do a short pitch on um, an event that we're organizing in Prague where it would be crucial to have registrar input in, into those discussions. Sharing registrant data with third parties, uh, AFNIC um, has a nice example, um, linked in our paper, so all, all the details are there um, as to, uh, to how um, they achieve that within the limits uh, of, uh, of the privacy regulations. And then there is the last thing uh, is the voluntary measures. Um, some of the R&D departments from uh, CCTLDs, uh, SIDN, uh, um, uh, there's a nice example there with, with their uh, uh, fake web shop uh, scanning. Um, Urit uh, has a, a preventive tool called Pews um, that scores uh, domains during registration on um, the likelihoods of, uh, of abuse taking place uh, through means of that domain. Um, so we, we see, so that what we, where we, 10 years ago, there was definitely a can keep this as far away from us as possible approach. There is now a can do approach within the limits of that set of principles that I, 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 uh, I clarified earlier. Um, and in close pro collaboration with uh, with the local internet community and within the limits of uh, the national uh, regulatory framework. And that's it for me. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. Let me just get everything going here again. You get everyone back on the back on track. Thank you so much, and thank you to hear about those different things. I'm really looking forward to reading that, uh, that, that documentation and uh, to see what uh, what everyone's doing, and especially the .fr they're doing that's in the in the limits of GDPR, because I think that is a, a thing that we are all battling. Battling. Uh, okay, how is GDPR handling data? What can we share with who and, yeah, and so on? Um, 
a few questions to uh, to you guys. Uh, how do you see with um, uh, domain abuse monitoring? Is that reducing the amount of support? How do you, as a registry, see that uh, helping the first of all the internet community, and also you as an organization? Maybe a little bit what uh, uh, you're just doing with that uh, tool. But how do you see the abuse monitoring uh, on the, how does that impact your your operation? Who wants to go first, Philip? Sure. Thanks, Ricard. Um, I think it's important for first of all to look at the mission of the organization. Um, I think for us, it's it's our one of our strategic objectives is to promote the use of internet. And then when you say that uh, trust in the internet services is key and then you quickly come to uh, security and doing as much as you can as a registry to uh, to make sure that the zone is as fraud free as possible. It's never it's never going to be zero, of course, but uh, we have been uh, investing in, in solutions and many of those were presented by Peter uh, since 2010 in, in, in an, an attempt to clean our zone as much as possible. So, and um, besides that, besides that mission in, in the long term or the division in the long term, I think it's also a commercial, a commercial asset. So I don't mind if other registries, in particular the commercial ones like .com, which I consider as our biggest competitor, don't mind too much about security. I, I, I see it as a USP for, for .be and a, as an extra service that we deliver to our our Belgian domain name holders, but also our Belgian internet users. So I see it as a commercial advantage as well. So was that the reason why you started with it? Like you said, 10 years no, ago? It's a, it, it, it was the, the two the two objectives uh, run in parallel for me. Okay. No. And how do you see it going forward? Is this something you will be doing for the next 10 years? Like it's that. It's a, yeah, it's a bit of a cat and mouse game, of course, where we always try to be uh, as, as close as possible to to those that are committing or looking to com to commit fraud. Uh, it will not it will not stop. I'm uh, I'm afraid. And the next step for us, concretely, is the know your customer solution. So we have the ambition um, by the end of the year to identify all new registrations uh, by private and business users. So that's on, on average, just to give you an idea. That means about uh, 240, 250,000 identifications a year of domain names. That's a lot of identification. Yeah, and I think I think this is the way forward for everyone. Um, so it's a bit perhaps a controversial uh, statement, but um, there's new regulation that, that's coming up uh, from, from Europe that might force us to that. So, and we don't want to be forced by regulation. We want to be ahead of regulation. So that's a bit uh, the, the philosophy on, on, on security for us. Okay. How do you see that, Nani, when you were at uh, .sc or Internet um, Yes, let's say I, I, I talk today as, as a private person, not as, as a representative of the, the Swedish registry. Um, I stopped working there one year ago. But if, if I come back to, to, to Peter's uh, presentation, you can see a couple of phases in the life of a registry and before before 2005 2010 it was mainly a technical organization as peter said and then so it, it basically the focus was make it work uh, make it stable and, and make it easy to do a registration and and after that we had a phase maybe between 2010 2020 where you have more and more marketeers coming into the registry and it, it's a bit like not only make it work, but also make it popular. And, and, and then you get the branding and the campaigns and, and trying to, to make use of the domain names. And uh, the phase we're in now in the registry is, is, is it's not so much the, the phase of the technicians or the phase of the marketeers, it's the phase of the, the legal people, the policy people, the compliance people. Now we have a third layer where, where you see that life in a registry is getting more and more complex it's it's uh it's the the, the landscape has changed and the, the most popular uh, departments are the the legal people the the compliance people and 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 the people that that have to have to look at 
not only make it work, but also not make it popular, but also make it responsible. And and uh, my perception is that that yes, as a registry, you have to invest in not being blind, to know what's happening, to to do your monitoring, to make sure that your main asset, the data, is accurate, correct, and and, and relevant. Uh, then again, you you have to be careful that you you, you don't um, be too ent enthusiastic of of what you can see and what you can find and what you can analyze and make sure that you don't give analysts and technical people too much toys so they see too much and they want to push the button on deactivate and block and so you, you need some sort of auditing auditing internally and you need processes how to handle with the intelligence you have but you you should have the intelligence you should have knowledge you should be able to see what's happening but then you should invest in being more proactive with your local internet community and the, and the, um, the law enforcement organizations locally so you find the solution how to act on the intelligence but but you, you, i'm more i used to be more reluctant in there's a difference in in being intelligence and f knowing what's happening but you shouldn't be the one that push the button and say i'll take you out and who should do that I say that we, you should invest a, as a registry in making make, make, making people who are responsible, like, like the police, more knowledgeable. So, so they 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 should we should help them to be uh, on the same level, so they actually understand what's going on. And and that's not happening in every country. Um, so so and that's why the registry should invest more time, education, training. Uh, helping them, uh, and and it's and it, and it, let's say if you see the registry's finances, there should be also and uh, some sort of uh, always being a, a preacher of the domain name is too cheap. So so make the domain name a bit more expensive and invest more money in training, monitoring, and intelligence and compliance and and legal responsibility. Peter, what's your uh, comment on that? I think. Done good. Yeah. Um... Sorry, for for being such an important topic, um, there is still a lack of agreement on on how abuse is actually measured, um, and it's it's a bit strange for something that we have been discussing for so long. So, I mean, we see different metrics. We uh, there is uh, ICANN that came out with a, a, a data-based um, reporting uh, tool. I think they plan to do this on a quarterly basis, um, mainly focusing on GTLDs, of course. Um, we have a wide range of different providers uh, that are using uh, their 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 own products and services to to uh, to provide scoring to uh, to to top level domains gtlds and cctlds alike but if you look at these numbers they're quite far apart often um european commission launched a recently a a dns abuse study um and it's probably worth pointing out there so if you look at there's some i mean a center we had we had a few observations on that study mainly on on some of the flawed logic in there but if you look at the the, the, the data and the stats that they're using from the uh, Université de Grenoble in uh, in France as a basis um, who have combined um, all sorts of feeds uh, into coming up with a, a, a significant statistically significant sample of, of DNS abuse uh, Compared to their sample, European CCTLDs provided 0.8% of the abuse that was identified in, in that study. So we're, we're really already showing the effects of what has been happening over the last decade um, in, in the CCTLD world. Um, and, and I believe that we will see the continuation of that. I mean, nobody is going to just sit back and relax based on um on, on the trajectory that they've already taken um criminals spammers fraudsters are getting smarter are working harder 
um, and and so will be uh, be the the the, the CCTLD industry, um, but again within within those limits. So yeah, two things. Um, it, it might be interesting to to discuss how we're going to agree on measuring abuse and then being able to benchmark uh, abuse in in CCTLD so that not everybody has their own tool. Uh, but that we agree on on one joint uh, tool, or, um, or or find a repository where where, where comparison is, is possible. Yeah, I I'll, I'll, I'll also, sorry, yeah. sorry. I'll, I'll also send the links to uh, to the DNS abuse study and the central comment on that uh, for those in the audience that might be interested. Yeah, yeah but those the measurement just to compare between the the registries and the, uh, the TLDs around the world, because it's always a debate. Where is there a lot of abuse, where is not abuse, and so on and so forth. Even between registrars, what is a bad registrar and what is a good registrar? And that is something that I really agree with you, Peter, that have someone uh, to set those limits. What is abuse and how is it measured within the, uh, the overall community? And um, Talking about this uh, also regarding uh, law enforcement agencies, like, do you think that the law enforcement agencies have been better on this the last 10 years or what's their actions? How do, how do they handle this? You had the different phases done. Is it the same kind of phases for uh, the law enforcement agencies? I say I missed the last year of, of what's happening in Sweden, but let's say before that, I think that um, we are lacking uh, both knowledge, training, coordination in Sweden to have a, a law enforcement at the at the level that we should have. This is important part. That is a, that's um, a lot of companies and private persons are, are hit by by abuse. Or, or fraud and and it's it's a it's a, a huge market and and the law enforcement is either understaffed or not focused or not knowledge, knowledgeable in the area so, so i can be a bit more blunt now no i'm no i'm not <laughs> not the ceo but no i'm not impressed but yeah. maybe something has happened while i was away the last year how do you say philip I can I can confirm part of Danny. I will be uh, kinder to our our law enforcement agencies. I think the knowledge is there, but understaffing is is also true in Belgium, uh, and sometimes also lack of focus. So and 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 that's why to come back on what Danny said previously, I, I understand of course that education and and training and so on is important, especially in the long term, but it is a very long term investment, and that's 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 why we are. Uh, in Belgium, a bit more voluntaristic from the registry point of view to inter to inter intervene wherever possible within our authority, of course. So we, uh, Peter mentioned in the beginning, content. We we never judge on content. We sometimes use it to confirm a sort of uh, abuse of our own policies that we see, but we never judge on the content itself. So we always find our own policies or uh, agreements we have with law enforcement. Uh, to act so but we are we are quite voluntaristic to act yeah but i think like you say it's it would take that kind of a journey for the law enforcement agency you need to yeah. start somewhere and it's better started today than in 10 years time yeah. and uh yeah so, but, uh, i agree uh, from a registrar standpoint same thing they're getting better and better like when we started 10 years ago a lot of debates about ip addresses who can find what information and so on now it's getting more clear and clear and the pr uh, practical processes i think is starting to get more into place what we are seeing the one i'm seeing in sweden at least um Rick, there was a question in the chat i don't know if you want to take it now or wait for it yeah we, we can do a further the discussion then we can i can jump over to oh, which one the, the, the one that said here peter and then it just mentioned that cctld work in some data abuse tools following the recent trends should registries invest buy out such tools that's uh, i think there's been some uh, collaborations between for the last eight years something between or maybe less than that 
six years between different registries on tools but how do you see it is that something should be done within center within europe within ICANN, or within how what kind of forum should that be you guys think? I, I already responded in uh, in the chat, so so that in, in some cases, indeed, that type of close collaboration, whether that involves financial investment or uh, a long-term contractual commitment, uh, is probably the most efficient way. Um, but regardless of the type of uh, bond that uh, is created, the, the services that these organizations provide, um, and the data that results from it will in my view, be crucial uh, for, for the, the registry of the future and the registrar probably as well, if you want to drive down your your uh, your uh, customer care costs in, in, in handling all sorts of complaints, of course. So you don't see that the center, if I put it like this, center should not take the lead on that and invest into these kind of tools and, and or build it? No, what I, what I, we, we are actually going to ask the question to our members and I'm, I'm, I, I think I can live with both responses, yes or no, but should there be a common um, methodology on, on measuring abuse? I think that would already be a nice start. And yep. the center has no operational ambition in exactly. measuring that and keeping track of that. I mean, we might be the repository or, or like a black box in which people put their data and then can are able to compare uh, both CCTLDs and commercial players, by the way. Um, but so anyway, I'm, I'm going a bit, uh, getting a bit ahead of myself. Here. So this is the conversation that we're going to have end of May in Prague. Um, should we do that or not? Or are people happy to work with the tools that are currently at, at their availability? Yeah, perhaps to, to um, follow up on Peter, yeah, this operational um, experience is, is at the level of the of the CCTLDs at the, re at the registries, not at centers centers level. Eh? So it's it's very difficult for center to build these tools. And in terms of, of fighting abuse, there are some, there are some cooperations between registries. And just to give an example, we are talking to SIDN on the fake uh, web shop detection. We are. Uh, talking uh, to, to uh, some of our colleagues of Eurit on the prediction of, uh, of, do of domains that are registered probably for fraudless reasons. So the, those type of exchanges of experience uh, are being done. But it is indeed the definition of abuse is still debatable. Yeah. No, but then I think, and again, you're debating that within Europe. If you take that on a larger scale within like all CCTLD registries in the world, it, then it becomes politics or could become politics very quickly. And then we have a completely different discussion. Uh, Richard, if, if, I, if I may, just to, to flag this, that the CCNSO actually has that ambition. So they're starting up a, um, I think it's a standing committee on DNS abuse. Maybe it, um, I got the terminology wrong, but anyway, they will from now on have a group um, con consisting of all members in the CCNSO, or at least those that are willing and caring enough to participate, to discuss this same issue on a global level. Um, but they are probably going to to stick safely to exchanging practices rather than to 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 drafting some sort of policies or um, to to prescribe what possibly could be best practices. So I think they'll stay away far from that. Uh, Rika, they. If I can comment on the question that, that was there. Um, that said, <clears throat> only the large registries could maybe invest in making their own tools for other, other organizations would be too complex and too costly to build up their own intelligence. And, and then again, I, I see also if there's, if there's a market where you have specialists uh, uh, providing the, the, the tools it's i think it's easier and quicker and cheaper for a registry to buy it and then to ask the specialist to develop the tools in in the way that could could serve all the registries i think it it's it's like in in our market in the beginning you had to build everything yourself every registry would build their own registry system and every registry would would find a solution uh for maybe even any cars but now and now you have in the in the market and in the sector you have specialists for any cars you have specialists for domain monitoring tools you have specialists for registry services and and it's easier i think to to buy and to build yourself even though it's fun yeah <laughs> 
No, but isn't that like also because we talked about before, it's like race is going to be more like organized, not like 20 years ago, it was more like, it was you done instead of saying it, making it work and making it stable. Now it's more on the develop uh, the, the registries. Um, and for uh, how does how do you guys see it regarding a registry to take down the scam domain names? Like, should it be on the registrar? Should it be on the registry? Should it be in law enforcement or like a court a court to decide it? If you need to answer, who should take that kind of decision? Shall I? Um, I see that many registrars were in the in the in the. Uh, event avail available uh, present today so perhaps they will like what i say for me the the first line of, of defense is of course the not law enforcement but courts that's the first line of defense uh together with registry so i see it as our responsibility because we can act much quicker on based on simple controls we as a registry can act and let's say take a domain name in quarantine for a moment so that it doesn't do any harm uh then the definitive solution can come from um, from courts or or authorities that are that have the competence to 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 act or to ask us to act and only a there's a, only a last resort for me for registrars or to to intervene but why wouldn't the registrar do it it's their customer Be, they yeah, but, but if you centralize, in, if you centralize the the, the point of contact uh, for, for the, all these uh, these um, uh, government bodies that can ask for, for for the blocking of a domain name or the deletion even of a domain name, it, the the, lo the most logic central point is the registry. Yes. So, which doesn't which, which doesn't mean, by the way, that you cannot get other requests from government bodies other than blocking a domain name it might be something a registrar can do which a registry cannot do like uh, an intervention uh, on, on a specific website for instance yeah but can a registrar shut down a website are you able to do like to remove the dns servers on the dot yeah it depends which government body is asking what of course i think uh, no, but I don't you can I have a customer. I don't like the customer anymore. But Rick, that you are a registrar. Yeah. So Make that for a meaning. Like, yeah. do you think I should do that? Depending on what, what, uh, who, who is asking you to do it. Yeah. And that's the, that's a question. Who, who should have that kind of authority? Like, for, I know that when you were at the see at the intensive center, I mean, you had a. There were some a few cases like 10 years ago that were debated where they were um, making some marks on how how it was handled in sweden but do you see any like is there thoughts how that would happen 10 years ago or any like well, maybe you're referring to the, the the bank issue the bank case the uh, bank is a super interesting one no, but I said they, so. So maybe ten years ago or more, we 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 got from our uh, post and telecom agency, so so it's the the organization that supervises us. We got the 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 demand that we should block all B A and K domains or domains with B A and K in it, uh, because that they say everything that is that has B A and K is a bank. And, and we said, no, we're not going to block. We're not going to uh, make registration impossible because B, A, and K is not a bank. It's a B, an A, an N, and K. And, and they, they needed education and training here to understand what a domain name is and what ASCII is. And a B, A, and K is not the Swedish bank. It can be a Polish dance it can be a sofa in holland it can be family banks it can be banky moon or whatever and uh, and they wanted to find us uh, and then with the help of our registrars we actually we we made a petition and they they backed and after that i think that there's much more understanding in sweden what a what a domain name is and what it isn't and what is 
what domain abuse is and what it isn't. So we, we, we have a fairly relaxed situation in Sweden. Um, but still, I think it's very important that and even if it's, if it's a, a governmental agency, they just can't come into a registry and say, you have to block a domain name without a, a decent understanding what they're asking for. So it's our it could be um, social that, I think it could be shutting down a company. It's like like locking the door to a store. Yeah. So even if a police agent would come uh, in the evening and say, "I've I found something, please block it," even then you you have to have routines. Is it actually eligible? Is it is it okay? Do we have an understanding? Is there a mandate on the other side to to ask for that? Yeah. Uh, so I don't think that you have to be too quick. Yeah. 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 Jumping up to the uh, next question. Um, we are seeing a lot of KYC uh, within the banking industry, talking banks again, that, that wasn't there 10 years ago. The KYC is tightening a lot the last 10 years. Do you see that in, within the uh, domain, uh, domain names, Philip, you talked a little bit about it before. What kind of... What kind of KYC do you think people would need 10 years from today to register a domain name? So, um, three, difficult, three, question, yeah. <laughs> difficult question because 10 years ahead is a, well, five years, a long like, time. How do you see that? When do you, will it happen? Is of when? It, it will happen. I hope it won't so that we are the only one who do it out of, uh, as I say, out of strategy. And I hope the rest will not be forced by regulation. But I'm afraid that it will come. From the EU or from who? From European regulations, yeah. yeah. No. So um, for those who have been following the, the Network and Information Security Directive Part 2, uh, so NIST 2, um, as it often referred to, Article 23 there is very specific on uh, the need for registries and registrars to maintain accurate uh, registrant data, um, depending a bit on, on which version of the current proposal you're reading, you have more or less detail on what that entails. I mean, this is a um, regulation, oh, sorry, this is a, a directive, uh, so it still needs to be transposed into member states. Um, I think for the sake of all of us registries, in particular registrars, let's please hope that there is a clear uh, delineation of what that means so that you don't have to get uh, name, surname, telephone number, ID number in country X and name and email in country Y and all sorts of other weird things that people could come up with when it comes to what is accurate and complete registrants uh, data. So, um, so for the sake of, uh, of 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 the industry, let's let's hope for consistency. But there is an I think there is an important uh, point here to to mention that at the moment, any data accuracy obligations, especially during the moment of registration, would are still creating friction on the platform that is setting our industry at an enormous disadvantage towards um, the real competition. And contrary to Philip, I don't think it's .com. I think the real competition is all other sorts of ways that in which people can establish an identity online. So that's Facebook and Twitter and social media channels. And um, our communication manager did a really nice uh, test, live test, chronometer test. It takes less than five minutes to be up and running. Um, on Facebook, and it does not really need any proper identification. Yes, you need a working email address, um, and it takes more than an hour to, uh, and that was even quick, to launch your first web page. Um, we don't need more friction on that platform. And as long as there are no tools available, EID tools, well implemented, easy to access, cheap to access, um, we will not be seeing an, an, a rollout, I think, in, in most of the European member states. It, the, those things will go hand in hand. If EID is properly rolled out, then indeed it, it will be smooth and easy. And and no registry, even without, I think, forceful obligations from a regulatory perspective, would object to having real nice data in their databases. And the same for registrars, I assume. But it all depends on the tools that we have. Yep. You are predicting a bright future for me, uh, Peter. 
<laughs> well, well, Richard, what could happen is that that um, um, and and that is not a, a big problem for a CCTLD for a country called top level domain. If you imagine the, the Swedish case, you, you would have let's say ninety five percent of the, the 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 domain holders are Swedish, and then then you have a couple of percent some percent in somewhere Finns and Danes and Norwegian and, and you come to 98% if you find a solution or 99% you find a solution with the with the Germans and the Dutch and if it becomes a nuisance with with trying to find out who the customers are from the other countries you just skip them and 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 you have two percent churn that year and and then you 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 don't care anymore about all these regulations about trying to find an accurate solution for a Chinese who wants to do a registration of a .dot uh, The problem is is more the the global providers, where you have a, a big spread. Uh, the problem could be more for the registrars, global registrars, large organizations, small CCTLDs can find a very easy solution. Yeah, and also more global registrars could be or are usually like public listed companies. They have responsibility to, like, to the shareholders. Meanwhile, the CCTLDs are some sort of related to uh, a, gov a government, the country, and maybe not so profit driven. Like that, as, or you, you get the Norwegian solution where you have local presence, whatever that is then. But then you also have uh, companies like Registrar circumventing all these things. Mm, of course. Uh, finding solutions for it. Should we jump over to the questions from the audience? I don't know. Um, now we have the Q&A mode. Um, uh, we had one question regarding uh, DNSSEC. Would DNSSEC, like, how do you see uh, DNSSEC, is that something that could help this, or will that just be something that delays the registration process so people do use Facebook pages instead? I think I think most registries are offering DNSSEC uh, today, but not mandatory, of course. It's a decision of the customer and of the registrar, and, yeah. and that's how I look, look to it for the future as well. It's only a, a small sol a solution to a small problem. And it doesn't doesn't prevent a whole lot of uh, abuse cases. So, yeah. So my my I answered already in the chat. Yes, I think it should be mandatory. We we started to implement it already in 2005 in Sweden. It has taken us more than 15 years to come more than 50 percent. So let's make it mandatory. Then then we can speed up the the other 49 percent. If you believe in security and you think it's worthwhile and everybody's implementing it, get it done. Yeah, I think today it still is quite complex for for customers to deal with it. So I think that's why not the other fifty percent or forty nine percent done is not jumping on it. No, we 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 are we are we are too flexible and we are too to just too nice just say you have to have it you are missing the the registry position <laughs> i um, i just dropped an, a message in the chat uh with a, a shameless sales pitch uh for a free event for registrars to attend it's the center registrar day um but but what is the city you're, you're meeting these poor people? Uh, uh, we're meeting in Prague uh, on the 2nd of June. Um, but it's really? actually an answer, it's an answer to the DNSSEC question. Um, I think lots of registries have found out that part of the problem with DNSSEC rollout is the lack of automation in, in the, the, the process and the transactions uh, from registrant over registrar to registry. Um, and so there will be a, a session dedicated to a DNSSEC automation. And, and we believe that might be the key to, to unlock a bit more of the potential, probably not to reach 100%, uh, but it would be a good start. So anybody who's interested in DNSSEC automation, join us in Prague or online, although that would be a poor alternative from, uh, from <laughs> seeing you in person. 
Uh, we have one question here. Um, I will, uh, um, how can we build a better cooperation between the whole ecosystem to prevent better abuse? It's a very broad question, but let's take one thing each. Let's keep it short. Like, what could we do? Uh, if someone wants to start, do you have one thing that you can mention? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to start. There, there is a, a saying, I'm not sure if it translates well, um, but there's a saying in Dutch that says, if everybody sweeps in front of their own door, the street will be clean. Um, and so I think the, the, the idea is that if, if all the actors in, in the long chain uh, start taking their responsibility, we will already see a nice effect. And yeah. again, referring to the old stats from uh, from the DNS abuse study, it, it it already shows in Europe. I mean, people are taking this topic seriously. Yeah. Philip, Danny, do you have anything to add on? I don't know. Uh, the first thing I thought about was was um, I can remember that I uh, a couple of years ago we had an ICANN meeting in in Montreal, and then we had some co uh, follow up meetings, ICANN meetings thereafter, and. All the meetings are related to agreeing on the definition of DNS abuse, which is a, another way of saying as, as long as we discuss the definition, we don't have to do anything. And, and to be honest, I think it's, it's um, we, we could, as a whole eco ecosystem, stop discussing definitions and start to work and, and actually solve the problems we can see already. Um, and, and there's too much discussing for the sake of the discussion and, and actually using it as, as, a, as a way not to do anything. Um, and, and for me, that's a, you don't have to agree on every definition of DNS abuse. And you, you, you could use the DNS abuse institute if you like, but, but still that it's obvious that that something is happening in, in the market and in the sector, you should start monitoring and, and taking care of your, of your zone file and your customers. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Sorry, what I would like to say on that is that we, we have never uh, discussed yet the, the definition of that abuse because it, it, it goes in all directions and, and we, for us, uh, made a definition of abuse, fake web shops, everything has to do with phishing and everything that, that has to do with malware. So for us, for example, spam is, is, is not an abuse. Uh, for also DDoS is, is not abuse on, on, in the domain name system. Um, and why do we consider those three things? Because we think that those hurt immediately the end users. And that's why we want to act on that. And we also try to limit the scope a bit so that we can focus our efforts on, on those uh, those abuses so it's a matter of of picking your battles and trying to be to be good at those specific things yep. of course there's a cooperation yeah. as i said there is some cooperation but it's more one-on-one -on -one. yeah yeah thank you uh, uh we have this one this is a um, quite interesting one uh the war in Ukraine, how would that affect the industry and what will happen with the uh, RU domain names? Um, yeah. Perhaps I can take it. Yeah. Yeah. Please. Because I don't know if he's, he's still aware of what, what .se is, is doing. So um, the in terms of the registrations, we, didn't, we don't see any impact. So we, we, don't, we, we see a slowing down in new registrations, but that's since that the, the lockdowns stopped because during the lockdowns, we saw a, a huge increase. So, but the Ukrainian, the war in Ukraine doesn't affect us. Um, and what we decided on, on the main names uh, in hands of Ukrainian registrants, but also Belarusian and also Russian, is where we decided to uh, extend our quarantine period from 40 days to one year. Probably still to be extended, depending on the situation at that time. So that means that the domain name, if it's not, if it's not, if it's not paid, will stop being active but will still remain on the name of the registrant. So because of all the international payments that are, that are an, issue, an issue now, we anticipated that there might be an issue, but we don't, but we don't want people to lose their domain names in those three countries. Peter, do you see anything in the center? 
Do you have anything to add on this topic? Um, no, I mean, uh, the, what Philip shared, we've I've, I've heard from a few members, well, it was actually shared via the list, uh, a few members are taking similar um, similar initiatives. Um, but indeed, I, I, I do not see that anybody has reported significant impacts on uh, registration rates. Um, apart from probably um, Ukrainian registrations were up quite a bit. And they're doing quite a lot of KYC, if I remember correctly. You need to have a, like a Ukrainian company and so on to register a domain in there. Uh, and what will happen to, uh, with the .ru? Will that still be? I guess we all can agree that it will, it will, I can will not do anything. That's my guess at least, or my. Uh, and, no, no, and, no. I, and I don't think I can, I can should do anything. Um, this, I mean, just even the mere discussion or the shredding some doubts on whether I can, can or should do something from I can, of course, not from anybody discussing this like ourselves. Um, is would would actually be uh, the the ammunition that people in in ITU circles uh, are looking for to to show that um, the stability of the internet depends on the whims of a, a, a US based organization. Um, I think Icon's letter in that respect uh, was was nailing it. Um, politely declining the request uh, to take any action from their from their end. Yeah. All right. Anyone wants to add on that? It's a very critical topic. Uh, we have a few, two more minutes. Um, like, how, how do you see the future of abuse? We live with crypto domain names, web 3.0. Again, this is, I guess, the next five to 10 years, but do you see any Thing here in regards to the, we talked about Facebook replacing the uh, Facebook pages replacing the main names. But, but everything that will become popular will will attract abuse. Yeah. So the, the, it's, it's a, if crypto will be popular and will be there will be very highly used services, then then it becomes more attractive to to find ways. Uh, for the people who want to who want to make money, and and the abuse will go up. So it's just where the where the money is, where the people are, that the abuse will be. Yeah. I I think if if the uh, popularity would go up and these services are used more and more uh, in five years' time, a lot of people will be reflecting on the good old days when there were CCTLDs professionally run that took their responsibility underlining not liability but responsibility in, in doing their share together with the rest of the stack uh, there will be no stack to address um, and so I, I, I think the, the whole concept of fighting uh, illegal content abuse um, will have to be um, rethought from, uh, from, from scratch for sure. Yeah. 